Hello and a very warm welcome to you. Whether you're watching with us live or whether you're watching on Catch Up, we just pray that you get to experience the presence of God through our content today. We're at North Berwick Christian Fellowship, a community church here in North Berwick, and you can find out more about us uh, from our website. My name is Neil and I'll be leading us through things today. If you have any questions or if you just want to let us know that you're watching, then please do uh, comment below. We'd just love to hear from you to connect. And if those of you on YouTube, we'd love it if you would subscribe. Uh, it just means that you can keep up with all our content as it comes out. Every Sunday, there are two ways you can take part. Firstly, we gather at 10.30 on Zoom. This is just a more interactive time where we can pray together and you can get to meet some of our community. So you can always join us there. You email us for the link or you can watch it on YouTube. Um, but those of you watching on YouTube, we'd love it if, if you want to take that next step and connect with us on Zoom. So YouTube is at 11 and Zoom is at 10.30. So we recently held, held an offering for Bethany Christian Trust. And I'm delighted to let us know today that we have raised over £1,500 towards Bethany. And just know that that money is going to a good cause. Uh, we're going to make a difference in their mission to see an end to homelessness in Scotland. Such a significant thing. So thank you for your generosity. This week, we also relaunched our small groups, which we're really excited about. So we had uh, five groups meeting this week with 43 people, people from all over East Lothian and even a few from further afield, thanks to the technology we're using as we meet online. And so we're excited about what God wants to do with these small groups. And if you're interested in community and connecting and in growth, then these might be the sort of groups that are great for you. So if more people sign up, then we'll be potentially looking at a sixth group. Um, but we just wanted to extend the invitation. If you want to connect and grow, then small groups are there for you. At this time as a church, we've also been asking ourselves, what do we feel God is saying and how do we respond and one of the things that we've recently felt as a core leadership team is that God is calling us to pray, to pray into our future, to pray into the future of our fellowship and the community that is here. And we're praying that God would move powerfully. We're praying that God's presence would be at the center of all we do. And we're just asking God to speak to us about what he might want to do in our community. And so we're excited about that. And so whether you have uh, connected with us before or you're just uh, getting to know us, then we, we would value your prayers as well. We'd love just for us as a community online and, and in person where we can, we just want to be praying. We want to be praying for God to move in the future of this fellowship for the sake of the community that we're in. So now we come to a time of worship. Come get involved with us. Come sing along these songs of worship and adoration to God. We believe that as you sing and worship God, he wants to meet with you in your home. So come expectant as we come to worship. We come to worship you this morning, Lord. We still our hearts in your presence. We lay aside our fears, our anxieties and our worries. And as we come to worship, we remind ourselves that you are you are a God who is worthy of all praise and adoration. And we invite you to come and make yourself real to us in these words of Psalm 67. May God be gracious to us and bless us and make his face shine on us so that your ways may be known on earth, your salvation among all nations. May the peoples praise you, God. May all the peoples praise you. May the nations be glad and sing for joy, for you rule the peoples with equity and guide the nations of the earth. May the peoples praise you, God. May all the peoples praise you. The land yields its harvest, God. Our God blesses it. May God bless us still so that all the ends of the earth will fear him. Let's worship today. of love is my delight his eyes are fire his face is light the first and last the living one his name is jesus and from his mouth there comes a sound that shakes the earth and spreads 
conflicts the ground And yet this voice is life to me The voice of Jesus And I will sing my songs of love Calling out across the earth The King has come The King of love has come Troubled minds can know his peace, captive hearts can be released. The King has come, the King of love has come. My lover's breath is sweetest wine, I am his prize and he is mine. How can a sinner know such joy because of Jesus? of love are in his hands. The price is paid for sinful man, accepted child, forgiven son, because of Jesus. And I will sing my songs of love, calling out across the earth. The King has come, the King of love has come. Troubled minds can know his peace, captive hearts can be released. The King has come, the King of love has come. And my desire is to have you near, Lord, you know that you are welcome here. Before such love, before such grace, I will let the Come down, and I will sing my songs of love, calling out across the earth. The King has come, the King of love has come, and troubled minds can know his peace, captive hearts can be released. The King has come. sing my songs of love, calling out across the earth. The King has come, the King of love has come. And troubled minds can know his peace, captive hearts can be released. The King has come, the King of love has come. The King has come, the King of love has come. The King has come, the King of love has come. Good morning, it's great to have you with us. I'm going to be continuing our Ephesians series this morning, looking at Ephesians 3, 14 to 21. So if you have your Bibles, please do open them just now and, uh, and then just keep them open and you can keep referring um, back to that as, as we go. So I have two, we have two little girls, as you know, and uh, one of their favourite stories is uh, this story here. Guess how much I love you. And this is a story about a baby hair and a daddy hair. And all throughout the story, as many of you parents know who have kids, you probably know this, is this baby here keeps trying to find ways of telling his daddy how much he loves him. And every time the daddy comes back with an even greater gesture of love. Until the very end, when the little baby here thinks that the biggest thing that he has ever seen is the moon. And he tells his dad that he loves him right up to the, the moon. And then it ends with the dad laying down close by to him after saying goodnight and saying that I love you right up to the moon and back. It is a story of extravagant fatherly love and that is what we're going to be looking at this morning is extravagant fatherly love. 
So let's look at our passage this morning together. Now remember, all of these passages that we're looking at in Ephesians, they are full, and so we can't cover absolutely everything, but um, we're gonna work through it together anyway. All right, and see how much we can get out of this in the short time together that we have this morning. Okay, so verse 14. For this reason I kneel before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth derives its name. I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all the Lord's holy people to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ and to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do, who is able to do immeasurably more than all we can ask or imagine according to his power that is at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. Okay, so this is the second of Paul's prayers and I did the first one in the latter half of Ephesians 1, which we did a few weeks ago. So do go back and refresh yourself if you need to do that. And there are some similarities which we see in the way that Paul is uh, speaking and praying. And again, like the last prayer, this would not have been broken up. This would have been one big long sentence, not broken up grammatically like it is now, but it would have been one long sentence. The first prayer was focused on enlightenment. Remember I said that there was enlightenment, power and hope. And those were the three components to the first prayer. And it was a prayer of enlightenment, praying that the the eyes of our hearts would be enlightened to know the hope to which God has called us. This prayer is focused on enablement. Enablement. Not just knowing what we have been given access to, but us being able to grasp it and use it. Paul is saying, I want you to get your hands on your wealth to realize how vast it is and to start using it. This is a very application heavy passage, which I love. And you know me by now that don't just give me knowledge. Tell me, how can I apply this to my life? How can it transform me? And how can it help me to become more like like Jesus? And this is a great passage for that. So we're gonna look at the passage in stages and then we're gonna break it down and then start looking at some application. And then we're gonna do some ministry time together, a little bit in the middle and then a little bit at the end as well. Okay, so verse 14 says, for this reason I kneel before the Father from whom every family in heaven and on earth derives its name. The for this, this harks back to the previous sections in the last few chapters where Paul has been talking about the new humanity, the new family of God, the price that Jesus paid for this new family, the bringing together of Gentile and Jew. And it's interesting that he pulls this thought into the position of before the father. that he has been talking about his new humanity and his new family and he's saying that we come before the Father. He's saying that we are family from the same Father. That the divide that was there before, he's just reiterating another way of saying what he's already said, which is that we are one family and we now have the same Father. That that I kneel before the Father. And then right in the middle of this thought, um, for this before the Father, is his posture. And it says that he is kneeling, that he has turned to intercession at this point. He's kneeling. Now you have to remember that Paul was in prison during the writing of these letters and he wasn't chained to a wall. He was chained to a Roman soldier. So imagine being that soldier. And I don't know how long that chain was. I mean, when Paul knelt, was the the soldier pulled down with him or was there length or even just being that soldier just chained to Paul who is at this point fervent in his intercession for the reader. And Paul kneels. Nowhere in scripture are we told the posture that we have to assume when we're praying. It's just not something that is told of us um, that, that we have to do. Now, through Ephesians, we see the importance and the relevance of posture. We see that we are buried with Christ, that we are raised, that we're seated, we walk, that we stand. But here, Paul bows or he kneels, not as a religious act, but as a spiritual posture, 
a sign of fervency, a sign of passion. He's no longer expositing or teaching about, about the breakthrough and about what the cross has done. He is now turned from this expository mode and he's now in this interceding mode where he is fervently praying and interceding for every reader that they would really grasp the truth of what it is that he is saying. Interestingly, the norm actually was that Jews would stand when praying and it was only in absolute earnest that they would do otherwise. So Ezra, when he was petitioning, um, uh, sorry, confessing Israel's sins, Jesus in the garden of Gethsemane and Stephen when he was facing his stoning ordeal. Positioning ourselves before God is an important part of our faith. When we receive from God, we want to encourage you to posture ourselves before God. It is a reflection of our heart that as we are coming, you know, sometimes we want to, you know, come into worship and our, you know, we're not quite feeling up to it. And we know that something we, we, we is good for us. And we might posture our bodies in preparation for, um, for us to receive. And so sometimes we do that, we posture ourselves. But what we see here is that Paul, it's an overflow of this passion that's coming inside of him that he can't help but just get on his knees and just pray and intercede. So that's posture. So the next se uh, section, we can actually break into four headings. Strength, depth, apprehending God's love and fullness. So let's read it together. I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you being rooted and established in love may have power together with all of the Lord's holy people to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ and to know this love that surpasses knowledge that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. Now strength, verse 16, I pray that out of his glorious riches he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being. Now remember when I spoke about Paul's first prayer, power was the middle section. It was the thing which enabled us to get to the end. We had enlightenment, power and hope and we said that that was the beginning and hope was the end and power is the thing that gets us from the beginning to the end and power was the middle section. And that is what we are talking about here again is the power of his spirit strengthening us in our inner being. Now the Holy Spirit is the evidence of our salvation and the power of the Spirit is enablement for Christian living. Acts 1 verse 8, you shall receive power when the Spirit comes upon you. And we know that Jesus performed his ministry on earth by the power of the Holy Spirit. Luke um, 4, 14, Acts 10, that Jesus um, performed his ministry on earth by the power of the Spirit. So when someone like Paul repeats something which we need so often, He's so often repeating something. It is worth our while listening and paying attention and really understanding what it is that he is saying. And that is power. We need power. That we be strengthened with power. That we need his power. We have all been given his power. Not one of us is excluded. We have all been given his power by the riches of his grace. Not our abilities, not our performances, not our begging, nothing that we have done, but according to the riches and the kindness of his grace that we have been given um, his power. And this is something for us all to receive and to operate in. Remember I said before that we've all been given the bank account of a billionaire, so we don't wanna live on crackers and water that we have this power available to us so that our inner being may be strengthened. And there are things that we can do along with the Spirit's power to continue to strengthen our inner being. And that is keeping ourselves spiritually fed and nourished through prayer, worship, teaching, fellowship, anything which is strengthening, encouraging, upbuilding, and strengthening um, of the body. Feeding ourselves on God's word with his power and his spirit strengthening us. For me, worship is just a huge part of my walk with God. It's a huge part of my inner being, being strengthened and experiencing his power is through worship. And, you know, in this season, 
you know, we are just hugely missing um, communal worship, just worshipping together with the body, being strengthened together with his body. And so we are having to be really intentional about um, worshipping, you know, having times of worship ourselves, but also just constantly having worship music on at any opportunity. You know, sometimes when that song comes on that, um, and I know this impacts some of you as well, when that song comes on, you just have to take a moment and just let his spirit and his power just come and fill you because you're feeling his presence presence in that and just being intentional with that. So I want to encourage us all to find ways of being intentional with that. Okay, depth, verse 17. So that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith and I pray that you being rooted and established in love. We are strengthened so that Christ may dwell in our hearts. So that Christ may dwell in our hearts. Paul uses different words to express this idea of spiritual depth. Now the King James uh, Version uh, talks about being rooted and grounded in love and a lot of the commentators were using that language as well, rooted and grounded and the NIV says rooted and established and there's very similar concepts here. To dwell so that Christ may dwell in our hearts through faith. Dwell literally means to settle down and to be at home, to inhabit, to be at home and this is a deep relationship, this is an at home relationship. This is where I can come and I can be myself and I can be real. And this is an authentic, real relationship. So that we are strengthened so that Christ may come and be at home in our hearts. So that we are empowered by his spirit and our inner being strengthened so that Christ can come and be at home in our hearts. And this rooted and established or rooted and grounded. And I found some verses that were fascinating around this concept. Psalm 1 verse 1 to 3 says, Blessed is the one who does not walk, in step with the wicked or stand in the way that sinners take or sit in the company of mockers, but whose delight is in the law of the Lord and who meditates on his law day and night. That person is like a tree planted by streams of water which yields its fruit in season and whose leaf does not wither. Whatever they do prospers. And Jeremiah 17, 5 to 8 says, This is what the Lord says. Cursed is the one who trusts in man, who draws strength from mere flesh and whose heart turns away from the Lord. That person will be like a bush in the wastelands. They will not see prosperity when it comes. They will dwell in the parched places of the desert, in a salt land where no one lives. But blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord, whose confidence is in him. They will be like a tree planted by the water that sends out its roots by the stream. It does not fear when heat comes. Its leaves are always green. It has no worries in a year of drought and never fails to bear fruit. They will be like a tree planted in the water that sends out its roots by the stream. And there is this huge concept of the plant world when you talk about being rooted in God, that roots, um, plants have to get their roots deep uh, into the soil to get both their nourishment and their stabilities. I mean, you think of the great, um, great big tall trees that have, have to have really deep roots because when the wind comes without roots, they will fall over. It's the root system that stops them from falling over. And it's also where they get their nourishment and their stability. And we have to ask ourselves this question, where do I draw my nourishment and stability? Like what Jeremiah was saying, is it man or is it God? And that is why Paul was saying to us that, that we would um, receive his power. Where is it? So that we may be strengthened um, with power uh, through his spirit in our inner being. That his power comes and strengthens us in our inner being so that we have deep roots. Deep roots that are established in love so that we are strong, that we're stable, that we're getting our nourishment to operate in power, we must have depth. And the similar concept that goes with this is this grounded word, established in the NIV, but, but elsewhere is this grounded word. And this reminds us of the architect of a building. Whenever you are putting in the foundations, the foundations have to be deep. They have to be right so that you have to go deep so that you can go high. If your foundations aren't, aren't right, then any building will fall. If you don't go deep, you can't go high. And uh, I love what um, John Stott says about this. It says, For in the new and reconciled humanity which Christ is creating, love is the preeminent virtue. The new humanity is God's family whose members are brothers and sisters who love their father and love each other or should do. 
They need the power of the Spirit's might and of Christ's indwelling to enable them to love one another, especially across deep racial and cultural divide, which previously had separated them. That we need the love of God to be able to love one another. We need this as much now as they did then. We are not above this. We need God's power to love one another, meaning that it's not always easy. We need his power to come and strengthen us in our inner being so that our roots are established in him, in his love, so that we can be stable, so that we can be strong, so that we can grow high. But we also need to be established in love for one another. For one another. Love has to be the absolute foundation for all that we do. It is what our roots are planted in and the foundation from which we grow. Okay, so apprehending God's love or grasping God's love is verses 18 to 19a. That you may have power together with all of the Lord's holy people to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ and to know this love that surpasses knowledge. And this word grasp means to hold on, to lay hold of it for yourself. This is a personal experience, a personal encounter, a deliberate taking hold of, a personal grasping that I grasped hold of something myself because it is important to me. I grasped hold of it. Taking hold of the vast expanse of God's great love for us, the full expanse of it, the multi-dimensional love that Paul is talking about here, the wide, long, high, deep love that he has for us. This isn't um, an exaggeration. This is um, this is Paul trying to emphasize that there is no boundary to God's love for us. And it reminded me of Romans 8, 37 to 39. It says, no, in all these things we're more than conquerors who love uh, through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, angels or demons, the present or the future, or any powers, height or depth, or anything else in all of creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. And it also reminded me of this psalm in 1, 3, 9, 7 to 10. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to the heavens, you are there. If I make my de- bed on the depths, you are there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there, your right hand will guide me. Your right hand will hold me fast. This love is so great. It is bigger and greater than we could ever imagine, that it is incomprehensible just how great his love is for us, that nothing can separate us from his love. Width, length, height, depth, life, death, angels, demons, present, future, our past, powers, anything in creation, there is nothing bigger than Jesus and his mighty, great, death-smashing love for us. There is nothing bigger than that. Paul is running out of ways to say, scripture is running out of ways to say that his love is boundless for us, that his love will cross every divide, it will cross every path to come and to reach you and to show you that he loves you, that there is nothing too great for his love. There is nothing that you've done in in your past that is too great for his love. There is nothing in your future that is too great for, for his love. His love is so great, it covers absolutely everything. His love is so great that he wants you in his family. And even though we might try to understand it, it is so vast, it is so great, it is so overwhelming, it is so encompassing that it surpasses our understanding. We cannot physically understand it. Our heads cannot contain this knowledge, which is why he says that we need to have his power to grasp this concept. We need his power to understand the greatest of love that there is for us, that his love is for us. I think that if we fully understood just how much he loves us, we would never be the same again. And I don't feel like we can pass this moment without taking a moment right now to become aware of his love, his love for us. This love that crosses every boundary, this love that goes to the ends of the earth, this love that um, is higher than the highest highs, deeper than deepest depths, it is greater than every spiritual power concept or or belief in, in in known to man. There is nothing greater than his love. And I want us to take a moment right now to become aware of his love. To become aware of it. So why don't we just still ourselves in this moment to become aware of his love. 
And I took those three passages and I, I've just put them together and I want to read this over you. And I just want you to become aware of his love. And some of you might cry. You might feel his presence. You might begin to laugh. However you experience the, the spirit is, is fine. But just become aware of his love and ask his power to come right now and to reveal his love to you in this moment. So let's grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ. Know this love that surpasses all knowledge. There is nothing which can separate us from his life, from his love. Not death or life, not angels or demons, not the present or the future, nor any power on earth or under the earth, not height or depth or anything else in all creation, nothing, nothing can separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Where can I go to hide from his spirit and his love? Where can I flee from his presence? Nowhere. If we were to go up to the heavens, he is there. If we make our beds in the depths, he is there. If we rise on the wings of, his, of the dawn, if we settle on the far side of the sea, even there, his hand will guide us. His right hand will hold us fast. Father, I thank you for your love, for how great your love is. And God, I pray that you come by your power and reveal your love to us, that we would never be the same. In Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, in the next section, 19b is fullness, that we may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. We are designed to be full of God. We are designed to have his fullness in us, not to be void and empty, but to be full of God. We were designed to have him dwell in us, to be at home in our hearts. Our measure isn't those around us. Our measure is Christ. Remember, Christ is the cornerstone. He is the one th who is the standard. He is the one through which everything is now measured. And he is our measure for our fullness. It's not that we look at somebody else and we say, well, I'm fuller than they are, so hey, check me out, or oh, not quite as full as they are. That is not how we measure ourselves. We do not compare or measure ourselves to other people, but we measure ourselves according to the fullness of Christ. You know, some people say, well, I've already been made complete in Christ. And yes, you have. We have all already been made to Christ, been made complete in Christ. But there's a degree to which we operate in it. There's a degree to which we access it, to which we have taken hold of, to which we have grasped. And what Paul is saying here is take, a, take, take hold of the billionaire's account that you have and stop living on crackers and water when you have this full bank account. Yes, you've already been given it. So take hold of it. Take hold of it and be filled because the measure has already been given to you, but be filled with it by his power because we need his power to become full of Jesus. And then it closes here with the benediction, verse 20 to 21. And now to him who's able to do immeasurably more than all we can ask or imagine according to his power that is at work within us. To him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. I like the King James um, version where it says, now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask or think according to the power that works within us. Once again, Paul is using massive words to try and convey just how great this love is, immeasurably more than all we can ask or imagine. I mean, it's just like there is no way to expand this even further, immeasurably more, exceedingly, abundantly above all that we could ask or think, imagine or dream. It is well beyond this. You know, this is very Paul. In previous um, prayer, he used very similar language when he talked about Jesus rising from the dead. He said that he ascended far above, giving us who believe incomparably great power, far above all, the fullness of him who fills everything in all ways. It's just very kind of, there is no way to expand this even further. He's running out of ways to emphasize this point. And the same is happening here, that according to him who's able to do immeasurably more than we can ask or imagine. I mean, just think about that for a moment. I mean, wow, 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 wow. That if I can imagine it, dream it, it is not big enough for what God wants to do within us according to his power. 
according to his power, which is at work within us. If I can dream it and imagine it, it's not big enough. According to his power that is at work within us. I want to be so full of his power that in my imagination cannot contain the things that God will and wants to do in us. So the whole series so far, Paul has been emphasising the result of what Jesus did on the cross. He defeated sin and separation. He cancelled that which divides and brought us into a new family. And he's emphasising just how loved we are and the power that we need to live the new life that Jesus bought, bought for us. He said that he came to bring us life and to the fullest and Jesus and Paul said that we are to be filled with the measure of the fullness of God, just as Christ is. So how can we apply this? Well, we need to be rooted in love for one another and we need the power of God to help us grasp just how big God's love is for us. And we're going to spend a moment in ministry just now, just a few minutes in ministry just now, praying that we are rooted in love, praying for God's power to come and fill us so that we can grasp the enormity of God's love for us. And if you are feeling on the outside of this love, you don't need to be. I would love to pray with you for you to experience the love of God. And you can do that right now as uh, as we're praying. You can ask for the love of God to come into your heart and to fill you. And then I'd love for you to email me and I I would love to take you through um, some things together. So why don't you position yourself as we talked about earlier. You can stand, you can sit, you can kneel. You can position yourself in any way that you want. But we're just going to pray for just one minute just that we become rooted and established in love and that his power comes and fills us. You might just want to become aware of his love again and his presence. So Father, I pray that you'd come by your power and that you would fill us with your love, that you'd come and reveal to us the greatness and enormity of your love. God, I pray that we as a people would be rooted and established in love. That we'd be known as a people who love, who love beyond divide, who love beyond separation, who love beyond boundary. God, and I pray that we would know that love, that love that you have for us. Holy Spirit, would you come by your power and reveal your love to us now, that we would be marked by your love, that we would never be the same because of your love. And I pray for those who are feeling on the outside of your love, that they would know that they can come into your family as as you as our Father and be loved. So I just become aware of your presence now, Holy Spirit. Do you know we do not earn this? This is a gift according to the riches of His grace. And so for those of you who feel like you have to earn it, I just want to encourage you to lay that down. That we receive his love and his power because of who he is. So Father, I thank you that all of us can receive this now. Father, I pray that as we go into this week, that we would know the inescapable love that you have for us. That this week is encompassed and encased in your love. And I pray that out of that, that we would be able to love one another as we are rooted and established in that. And I pray that we would be nourished in your love and in your power. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so much for that, Joel. We're just uh, just loving hearing that powerful prayer that, that Paul prayed. And we pray that it would have a radical difference in your life this week as you encounter the love of God. Thanks so much for joining us today. We're so grateful that you chose to connect and to spend some time with us today. If you're watching on YouTube, please do subscribe so you can get future events as well. But we're praying for you this week. We're praying God's peace upon you. We're praying his blessing in your life. And we're praying that you come to know him in a greater way this week. We'll see you next week. Goodbye.